With a tour, there's a certain time to get your bags out so they can be loaded on the bus, and then you eat breakfast and head out. Our first stop was the Royal Palace of Aranjuez. We were the very first visitors there that day, and we had about an hour to wander through the gardens behind the palace. Once inside, again it was a no-photo zone. That's the Royal Nautilus machine. We found the highways to be consistently safe and smooth. Our driver was excellent, and our guide was even better. I think the motto was God, country, and family at the time. And um, you see there again on the left, we already see old Cuenca. Those uh, houses there on the, uh, on the left. Cuenca, like many cities in Europe, decided to build on a hill for safety's sake. One of us hadn't really prepared for cool weather, but most of us were pretty cozy. One of the wealthy houses on the rim of the hill is now a modern, world-class art museum. After our little bag lunch, we met the rest of the group and we walked across a tall, high bridge. On this chilly day, getting back on the warm bus was very nice. <coughs> After Cuenca, we rolled downhill to Valencia. Uh, because this was the uh, control, not only the movement of people in and out of uh, the city. We have them uh, coming up now on the, on the right. Maybe uh, some sort of uh, shellfish and some sort of uh, animals from the side. It reminds me of a cruise ship also. So, Carla Trava, the name of uh, uh, the architect. So that's uh, the hemisphere, the Museum of uh, Sciences. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, mirror lake. As you can see, Valencia is a city of the very old and the very new. The architect Calatrava developed many of these buildings for the city of science. Oh my golly. Marlia was fascinated to find that most of the surfaces were covered with mosaic tile. So this architecture was uh, inspired uh, by the architecture of uh, Paris. So here we are, oh Queen God. Square, Plaza de la Vena. We have the Michelet, the big tower of the cathedral uh, there. This was typical of the meals we got with Cosmos. And here are a couple of our friends on the bus. Oh my God. Well, about a year later, one of those just happened. <laughs> About two in the morning, I heard a sound through the open window. It was the trash truck outside. During the two weeks of the tour, we had breakfast served to us every morning in the hotel. 
After breakfast, we explored Valencia on our own. Being a Sunday, Marlia dropped into one of the churches for Mass. Valencia, like Barcelona and Madrid, had a large and gorgeous open market near the center of town. This is where paella was invented. Look at these paella pans. Being an inveterate thrift store shopper, Marlia just had to go through the markdown bin. No, she didn't buy anything. Valencia has transformed the old riverbed into a gorgeous linear park full of ball fields, picnic grounds, and recreation for the kids. That afternoon, we went out to the Albufera, called the Blue Lagoon for tourists. Maybe there are five or six degrees more than here. This place is perfect in summer. And also this plant um, is famous because a uh, long time ago, the people of this uh, town used to prepare a drink, drink called sarsaparilla. Yeah. And my boss always said that this is the grandma from Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> here we could go down and dip our toes in the Mediterranean. Marlia likes to get a small sample of sand and water from every body of water she visits. Some of the bridges were just barely large enough to take our bus. This thatched roof design was once all you found on this farming and fishing island. Eels are a large part of their fishing crop here and often are used in paella. Before dinner, they took us on an hour-long boat ride out into the lagoon. Then it was back to the restaurant for our own paella dinner. That's how the eel was served. The next morning we headed out for Penascola, a genuine Knights of the Templar fort. beautiful sunny day on the calm Mediterranean. More sand and water for the collection. Our final destination was Barcelona, but first, how about some lunch? Our first four days in Barcelona were an old hotel downtown, but not this time. We're headed for another art museum, but we find some interesting sights along the way.
As the sun goes down, we take another walk around Gaudi's masterpiece. Early morning light finds us at the Montjuic Overlook. This is the harbor we cruised last week. Our Barcelona tour guide takes us along the beach, a place we never saw in the first visit. Then we find ourselves back at the cathedral, near our old hotel. So, and that is in the end when, when, we, when we visit gods from the north, from the area of Germany or something. When they arrive here, they were ready for it. Our day trip is to Montserrat, the serrated mountain. This is the home of a Benedictine monastery that has been a pilgrimage site for over a thousand years. The road to the monastery is a difficult and treacherous one. It earns our driver a round of applause. As we enter the cathedral, we're fortunate to see a number of Benedictine monks. was completely restored outside and inside at the turn of the 20th century because it was so much affected by the, the, the war against Napoleon. Behind the altar is the famous statue of the Black Virgin. Pilgrims file past the statue just to touch the special orb she holds. The day ends with a wonderful dinner at our modern hotel. Now we head west to Zaragoza, an old Roman town. Just a few years ago, they discovered a complete Roman theater buried under buildings in town. section of the original Roman wall still exists. On the way to Pamplona we see wind farms and solar farms. These exist everywhere and provide about 15 percent of the power for the country. After checking at the hotel we head for a museum and encounter our own running of the bulls. The museum in Pamplona is a wonderful surprise, full of antiquities and marvelous examples of art and mosaic. stay until closing time and then walk the town and see the sun set. On the edge of town is an intact star-shaped fort. How many modern towns have animated walk signs? and the hotel even had free internet. The next morning we cross the edge of the Pyrenees into deep Basque country, San Sebastian. <coughs> the 
located just outside France. This has been a vacation spot for years. Even this early in the season, you can see why. Our bus arrives exactly on schedule to take us to Bilbao. The Frank Gehry designed Guggenheim Museum brought fame and tourist dollars into Bilbao. Unfortunately, they have a particularly stringent no photos rule. Our next overnight is in Burgos, burial place of El Cid, and home of one of the largest churches in Spain. The figure above the clock that seems to be trying to catch flies with its mouth is actually a self-portrait of the clockmaker. In the church was a surprise display of El Greco paintings. A special chapel to the high constable was actually created by his wife. The side chapel has hidden mirrors in the paintings above. That's gotta be Charlton Heston. <laughs> 